Okay, next we'll dive into chronic venous insufficiency. So chronic venous insufficiency is a condition that occurs when the uh, vein wall or valves in the legs don't work effectively, um, which impairs their ability for blood to return from the heart uh, uh, to the heart from the legs, uh, revolting in venous stasis. And um, we have venous stasis, uh, we change oncolic pressures, and we can end up developing edema and swelling and, and, and some of the complications related to that due to that swelling and edema. Okay, so uh, it's a reminder that our, our, our venous network in our lower extremities, um, in particular, where we see uh, CVI issues, um, um, or at least where we see is most often manifest. You can see this in the upper extremities, but you're most often going to observe this in the lower extremities. Um, so our venous network in our legs is divided into three uh, systems or subsystems, our superficial system, uh, we have our, you know, our lesser and greater saphenous veins, we can visualize really easily. Our deep system, like our deep, um, our anterior and posterior tibial veins, our per, uh, perineal, popliteal, deep femoral, superficial femoral, and iliac veins, we have an image here. And then we have perforating communicating branches, which basically uh, connect the deep system to the superficial system. CVI can result from a, a, quite a few things. Uh, there's primary causes, which may be the result of abnormal valves. So you know, some people have just... Um, you know, damage to those or abnormal formations, um, you know, some sort of congenital etiology, or they may have secondary causes um, due to maybe vein wall degeneration, maybe they had a, a pro, like a thromboembolytic event which caused damage to it, um, or if they have maybe dysfunction of the muscle pump. So individuals maybe um, who aren't moving as much or have paresis or um, or a hemiparetic limb, they may be at risk for this as well, okay? Or individuals who um, are bed-bound, okay, may develop uh, these issues with uh, chronic venous insufficiency, okay? So, um, again, our Starling Forces model, again, if we change oncolic pressures or if we change uh, the, the, the Starling Forces um, where we have increased flow from the vascular system into the uh, interstitium, okay? We end up developing... Um, you know, increased filtration um, into the uh, interstitium here, okay? And it can be of numerous different causes, right? So, um, you know, we can develop edema, which is uh, this little band here from uh, my generation here. It's a little bit of a bad joke. We're not talking about these guys, though. Uh, we're talking about edema. So edema is uh, defined as clinically apparent uh, increase in the interstitial fluid volume. Again, it's when the starling forces... Um, are altered, so there's increased flow of fluid from the vascular system into the interstitium. Um, we can have a few different variants of this, so uh, it can be due to increased capillary pressure, um, which causes venous pressure to increase, causing, uh, again, filtration back into interstitium. We can also have it due to obstruction of the venous system or impaired lymphatic drainage, which you might see in an individual uh, post-mastectomies or a lot of our um, oncological patients. Um, either way, it's an imbalance of the starling, uh, starling force, not startling forces. Oof, sorry. Um, there can be generalized edema. So we see this in patients of heart failure. We see a kind of uh, diffuse uh, bilateral edema um, or patients with hypoalbuminemia, nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis of the liver, um, or in sepsis. Uh, but we can also see localized. Like if anyone have ro has rolled their ankle, you, know, you can see bruising. Um, and swelling localized in one area, okay? Generally, when it's, it's swelling is kind of um, generalized, a little bit more concerned for maybe more systemic cause. Um, however, there can be individual um, or localized lesions for systemic causes too, but just something to kind of get your pattern uh, thinking. You start seeing bilateral swelling. That's probably not, someone probably didn't, you know, in, in their feet, probably didn't roll their ankles twice, right? It's, or at the same time, maybe there's more of a systemic issue, again, starting at that algorithm of, of clinical decision-making, okay? Um, there's pitting edema. Uh, so pitting edema is when we have more long-standing and, and very significant swelling. We identify this by the time it takes for that uh, impression of pressing into the edema to the return. So basically, the longer it takes for it to rebound, the more significant, and it's based on these uh, time responses here, okay? described here. So um, PT implications for CVI um, exercise is a central central tenet for these patients um, where, again, if we improve the muscle pump, uh, we can maybe improve a little bit of that um, you know, fluid return to the heart and get them out of that localized system. Uh, so we find that short walks in these patients, um, you know, 
um, you know, where they may be sitting for long periods of time, the breakup that stasis in the legs um, may be effective, as well as doing a little bit of weight shifting if they have to stand for long periods of times, or using the uh, pressure stockings. Uh, we're actually finding that you don't have to have stockings go above the knee to be super effective for these patients with CVI, uh, which is great because if you work with those patients, they, they kind of hate the ones that go above the knee because they can kind of be um, grating on the skin. Uh, so they can, you know, use those ones below the knee. They're just as effective. On um, severe case, you might see compression pumps used um, where they we help kind of mobilize fluid back up into the, um, you know, the heart by kind of basically having almost an external muscle pump. Uh, you may also see uh, Una's boot used in these patients. Uh, you don't see that as often in the States anymore. You might see that in other countries um, where we basically use semi-rigid ca casting uh, to help um, mobilize fluid by causing the contraction of the muscle against the cast, but it's just, just not done as often. Um, and you may see edema massage. Uh, it's probably more effective for more localized uh, edema. You don't want to be mobilizing fluid in someone like that with heart failure or like liver failure, renal failure. Um, this is maybe more for you more localized. But even then, that may not be super effective uh, based on the evidence that exists now. Okay. Uh, next, we'll dive into ulcers, and I'm going to apologize in advance um, for this section, uh, just because some of the images may be a little, uh, little gruesome. Okay. So we'll take a break here. <laughs> 